Walter Onen's first passengers of the day are his two youngest children. He is a bike taxi driver in Jinja, some 90 kilometers east of Uganda's capital, Kampala. A few months ago, he traded in his old bike taxi for an Afri Cruzi, an e-bike developed for the African market, and he's been attracting a lot of attention. You know, at least you can see somebody say, now nah, let me go to e -bit. let me go with this one, because they are using power and not using manpower, so it attracts the customer. Afri Cruzi is the brainchild of Jürgen Perschon, a former teacher from northern Germany. More than 10 years ago, as he was traveling across Africa, he began thinking about how transportation on the continent could become more sustainable. Many in Africa ride motorbikes, which are expensive and polluting. Africa has lots of solar energy units and huge mobility needs. Europe has lots of e-bikes. So why not combine e-bikes with Africa's solar energy to make a cargo bike? That could really help solve mobility problems on the continent. To help turn his idea into reality, Jürgen teamed up with an e-bike specialist from Germany. Together, they designed the first prototype and realized the e-bikes would need to be adapted to the needs of African customers, including the local road conditions. That was a pretty big challenge when it came to designing the bike. The road conditions aren't necessarily like what e-bike riders are used to here. And some of the bike components that the industry tends to rely on might not be available in general. More spokes in the wheels and a reinforced frame styled in the look of a more expensive motorbike. The Afri Cruzi was designed to be robust and appeal to its clientele. And at 600 euros, it's quite a bit more affordable than most e-bikes. The project also includes a microcredit system to help people finance the purchase. Pershon's partner in Berlin belongs to Hero Cycles, one of the world's largest bicycle manufacturers. The Indian company can draw on huge economies of scale to produce the Afri Cruzis at a competitive price. For Hero, it's an idea that makes sense and gets them a new foothold in the huge African market. The first 100 Afri Cruzis went into operation in Uganda in 2022 as e-bike taxis, e-bike ambulances and water delivery bikes. Fabio, the NGO based in Jinja that's coordinating the Afri Cruzi project, the first batch of e-bikes already attracted a lot of interest. Fuel costs have also risen sharply in Uganda, as all over the world, which has helped to make e-mobility more appealing. This comes as an alternative, as a transport or mobility alternative that people can use instead of motorized transport like cars, like motorcycles. The fact that it is functional, it is able to carry 100 kilograms of, of cargo, so it is functional, it is very fast, it is, uh, of course, fancy. Fabio runs small service points to handle maintenance and to swap out the solar-powered batteries. Mechanic Joshua Mugaya joined the project early on and now has a permanent position. He sees a bright future in the technology. I want to start up a workshop. And I want to skill my fellow friends and younger people down there. I want to skill them on how to repair bikes and how to repair e-bikes. Walter Onan comes here to swap his batteries. When business is brisk, he's here twice a day. On days when he can't make it, he's out of luck. So one of the challenges is one thing, maybe if the battery is not there, so you cannot ride using night because there's no light. So you have to stop during the day. The Fabio team are in regular contact with technical designers in Berlin. Should the bicycle lights get a separate battery? Does the frame need any updates? The two teams are working on refining the next generation of Afri Cruzis. Jürgen Perschon is hoping for more support from another NGO called Atmosphere. Its business model? Air travelers make a voluntary donation based on their emissions. 
Those contributions then help fund green projects around the world. Afri Cruzi is hoping to become one of them. So now the analysts are studying how some of the bikes are being used. There are GPS modules that allow us to see how many kilometers the bike traveled and carry out surveys to see how people use the bike taxis. What form of transportation did it replace? Would they have gone by motorbike, by car or on foot? Using that data, we can determine how much CO2 emissions were actually saved. Even though that process takes time, the next 640 Afri Cruzi e-bikes are in production in India. They'll be headed to Togo, Benin, Burkina Faso, Tanzania and other countries. It's hoped to eventually produce some components in Uganda. Jürgen Perschon is happy that his Afri Cruzi project is taking off. And for Walter Onen and his family, the e-bikes have made a huge improvement to their day-to-day -day lives and future prospects.